Um, I'll just start off by telling everyone a bit about Moody's itself and what our role is and what a credit rating is. Um, Moody's Investor Service was established in 1909. We provide independent credit ratings and other independent objective um, forms of analysis on debt issued by corporations, governments, and other um, types of entities. We provide one opinion, just one voice of many that investors can use to make their decisions. Um, we don't recommend anything to investors. We don't recommend anything to issuers. And this is a pretty subtle but important point. Um, you know, we don't um, advise issuers on taxing decisions, on expenditure reductions, on how to fund their pensions, on how to solve their problems. So um, you know, it's very, very important that our role in the marketplace is just an independent, objective assessment. We provide that assessment through the lens of our published, publicly available methodologies. And for the City of Chicago, our rating is based on our general obligation rating methodology. The first question that we've gotten is, why did Moody's take rating action on Chicago when the Supreme Court decision was on the state's pension plans and not the city? And the answer is because our rating action was based not on the Illinois Supreme Court decision itself, but on the implications of that decision as we view it for Chicago. We, um, we expected that the Supreme Court decision might um, be one that reversed the state's reforms, but we didn't know for sure until May 8th how the Supreme Court would act. And we also didn't know specifically how they would express their opinion. For example, the opinion could have been expressed in a way that provided a roadmap for reform. But to us, it was pretty clear that benefit reductions under any circumstance are impermissible and in violation of the Illinois Constitution. So we've been asked, well, why not downgrade the state of Illinois? Why Chicago? And the answer there is that Chicago is in a much more precarious place than Illinois is with respect to its pensions. Illinois, by Gassy projections, their pensions would reach um, depletion by 2066. Uh, Chicago's pension plans, the four pension plans, municipal, laborer, police, and fire, under various projections and various assumptions, they are projected to reach insolvency within the next decade. So Chicago is in a much more precarious position when it comes to pensions. And the second reason that we took action on Chicago, but not Illinois, is because Illinois has a lot more tools in its tool chest than Chicago does. Illinois has a very, very broad base of revenue raising options, a lot of powers afforded to them, and they also have a lot of tools on the expenditure side that Chicago doesn't. One of those tools that Illinois has is they can push their problems on down to underlying units of local governments. So for example, shifting funding uh, to, for the pension plans of all school districts in the state other than CPS. That's an option that's um, been talked about for years. That's something that the uh, state could do and we'll be watching to see if in fact they do do that. That would be credit negative for the affected entities, but it could uh, help Illinois solve its budget problems. Again, we don't make any recommendations. We're not advising the state or the city or the school districts what they should or shouldn't do. We're just commenting on the, the options that are available. A third question that we've gotten is, why does we focus so heavily on Chicago's pensions? Shouldn't the strength of the economy and the city's ability to raise revenue counterbalance the severity of the pension challenges? And, you know, again, I would point to our general obligation rating methodology and how we look at Chicago's general obligation debt. We look at about 7,000 uh, local governments through this methodology, and we compare how Chicago uh, looks on a number of key metrics to those uh, local governments. And you know, we look at our adjusted net pension liability figure for Chicago, and we compare that to operating revenues for the city. For the city, that metric is, they are number one out of all of the US local governments that we look at. That ratio of pensions to operating revenues is the highest of any US local government that we look at. And it's true that the tax base is very broad. Um, the, the ability to raise property taxes and sales taxes is pretty 
pretty uh, strong, given the fact that the city is a home rule unit of local government. But um, you know, when you compare the size of the liabilities, not just pensions, but bonded debt, and you look at the debt of not just the city, but of the overlapping units of local government, so Chicago Public Schools, Chicago Park District, um, proportionate shares of Cook County, Mount Water, Cook County Forest Reserve. When you look at all of the debt and unfunded pension liabilities that a city taxpayer is responsible for, that number is very large relative to the other U.S. local governments that we rate. So just to give a sense of the scale of Chicago's liabilities, um, I'll compare this number here to a few other cities. The overall debt and adjusted net pension liabilities for Chicago per capita is 26,000. For New York, that number is 18,000. For Philadelphia, it's 11,000. And for Detroit, it's $13,000. So again, Chicago is twice as large um, as, um, almost twice as large on a per capita basis as Detroit when we're looking at overall debt and unfunded pension liabilities. 